Hey guys, welcome to the Traditional Bowhunting Wilderness Podcast. This is Jason Samkovic. Today we're going to do another video on how to make your strings. Both make your strings for your, your traditional bows. We're going to do it start to finish. Uh, about four or five years ago, I did two videos on this. One on how to make a string, one on how to uh, serve it. They were great videos. They're still fantastic, but um, obviously those were standard def. We're going to redo it here again, and I'm going to show you another, you know, the same exact kind of video again, but I'm not, this is more of an updated version for you. There are a few components you're going to need. I'm going to cover those, and then I'm going to bring you in closer, and I'm actually going to make a string for you. Uh, first things you're going to need, though, is you're going to need a string jig, okay? Um, you can buy them at like Three Rivers, things like that. If I find out, you know, maybe I'll put a link down below for you for them. But um, this one, I've had this one about 22, 23 years. It's, uh, you know, they're very affordable and they last forever. You know, it's just a simple piece of wood with some nails at specific dimensions on there. And they work like a champ. But you will need a string uh, jig to make a Flemish string jig or to make a Flemish string. You're going to need string making material. I'm using B55 Dacron right now. It's kind of the stuff I've been uh, playing with here a little bit lately. Um, but whether it's fast flight, doesn't matter what it is, you're going to need some kind of uh, string. We're doing two bundle Flemish twist, uh, so you'll need that. You will need knock, uh, knock points, or you'll tie on your knock. I'm pretty lazy. I don't tie knocks on my strings. I just use the little brass ones. They work fine for me. Uh, but if you want to tie it, you can tie it as well too. You will need a serving jig that you will have to have to put the serving on. You're going to need some string wax. You're going to need a lighter. It's going to come in handy for fraying the ends of that stuff. A pair of knock pliers, if you're using knocks like I am, to be able to lock that knock on. You'll need a Sharpie marker. This little clip is not mandatory, but it comes in handy. It's just a little, uh, real small binder clip. You can use any size of them, but it holds that, that pinches that string where you need it to a couple of times, comes in kind of handy. Um, that's what I use it for. You will need a tape measure or a ruler. Either one will work fine. You'll need some kind of a knife or something to cut the strings with if you're making them. I'm using yarn for my silencers, which I will show you that as well too. And you will need a bow square of some sort. That's all that it takes uh, to make this stuff. I mean, it's really pretty simple things. And then uh, I do use baggies like this. This is what I put them in right here. I just got done making that one and I label them. So they have on there what it is. This is a uh, for my Northern Mist 64 inch bow. It's a 16 strand B55. You can make your strings any way you want to. Uh, when I just said that, there's probably a bunch of people hitting the comments going, why are you using 16 strands for a for a 57 pound bow? You should be fine with 14 strands. I like 16 strands. I always shot 16 strand Dacron. When I make my fast flight strings, I'm also making them 18 strands where most people are not afraid to make them at 12 strands or something like that. I'm making mine at 18 and I'm padding the loops out to 22 on it. I mean, to each your own and everything they want to do. When you make your own strings, you make them your way, however you want to. I personally, I know that a 16 strand string and Dacron like that is going to be a little bit more weight. I understand it might be a, a foot or two per second slower than a, a or maybe a foot slower than a 14 strand. I understand all these things but I like them. I like shooting what I shoot um, and I like that I barely ever hit my arm with that string when I shoot because of the strings I make um, and I like the durability aspect of them and, and like I said they're mine. I'll make them any way I want to. Yours you make any way you want to. So um, but you could a 14 strand string if you're doing Dacron on, we'll do just fine with all the other stuff out there the dynamo 97s and uh the you know the 450 plus and you know all the fast flight materials any of that stuff you want to use it will all work just fine as well too um there's recommendations out there when you look at this places you buy them if, if you're buying from byc uh, at the time right now, Brownells is out of business, so there is no more B50 Dacron. There is no more Fast Flight, Fast Flight Plus. Those original ones, they've all been. Uh, Brownells is out of uh, is no longer in, in business, which is a horrible thing because um, they were great. They made awesome stuff. But now BYC, who is also great, they're the only option we have. So when you're looking at these different types of materials, on their website they will tell you what the recommended strands, uh, how many strands you want based on your weight, uh, or, the boundary, or the bow you're shooting, that kind of stuff. But for me, today we're going to make a 16 strand Dacron string. But throughout the process, I will show you some things as well too, like how to pad the loops, where if you were making a 12 strand fast flight string and you wanted to pad the loops out, I will teach you how to do that. So everything will be here for you. This is going to be an all-inclusive, everything you're looking for video. I'm going to zoom you in a little closer uh, so that you can see what I'm doing here as I'm doing it so that it all makes sense. You will also need your bow. 
Um, you're going to want your bow with you too so that you can put that string on and stretch that string out, mark your distances for where you're going to put your serving at, silencers, all that stuff too. So you will want your bow handy um, as you're making this process happen as well too. So I'm going to go ahead and reframe the camera, get you guys in here, and we're going to go ahead and take a look at this. Okay, now as we see this stuff here, again, you can see the items that we're going to need. I'm going to move some of this stuff out of the way for right now just to get it out of here so I don't have to use it because I don't need it yet. So we're going to just stick it over here so we can come back to it as we need it. And we are going to start here with the jig. Okay, we're going to start with the jig. These two pieces that I have here, these loose pieces, they're just what I'm using to tie off the string, you'll see. So I just kind of pre-cut those so that I have them available and easy for me uh, for when I need them. And they're also going to be for demonstration purposes here in a bit. But, so we take the string jig. On your jig, you have a bunch of nails at one end. And at the other end, you just have two nails. And then you got all these holes where you can move a peg in here. I have my board already pre-marked for different bows, 58 inch, 60 inch, my Northern Miss 60, 62, 64, whatever you want. You ha you'll, you'll figure this out as you go. Now there will be recommendations when you buy this jig. I believe it comes with some, but um, like I said, I've had mine for over 20 years. I don't remember. I, I know I marked it myself, but I'm sure when you get it, it's going to give you some pointers or something on there. But for me, um, to give you an example, Maybe it might help you out, but for me, for a 64 inch longbow, I'm going one, two, three, four, five, I'm going hole number six from this end. Give you an example. For a 62 inch bow, I'm going three more holes further than that. So you can kind of look at this and gauge, that's a 62, there's my 64, there's my 60, there's my 58. Now yours may vary. Depends on how tight you're making a string, how twisty you want it. Uh, so, so again, there is no 100% perfect. It is a trial and error with a string or two to figure it out. Um, but for me, that's my mark right there for how I make my 64s um, on there. Now, I also have my own recommendations for different parts of this, which I will be telling you as I go. Now I have them written down on here. I will actually zoom it in closer here where you can see, but this is my specs for me with a with my bows and how I do it. You can read that on there. I'll come in a little closer even if it'll still focus right there. Now what that means is that means that on a long bow, when I after I twist my loop, I want or I, I want to start with nine inches before I, nine inches to the center of the loop to the tag end. I'll explain that as we go. And the one and a half is how wide I, or how many, what I want my loop distance on the inside, which I'll also explain. And then the five is how long I want to Flemish that together uh, at the end nice and tight. So I'll explain that to you as I'm going. But see, I write it right on my board. Um, I've been using it that way for a long time. So I just have it noted right on there. Now, when you're making this, what you are going to do is you are going to start at a peg out here on these all these pegs. Okay, these will represent how many strands. So however many lines you see going across here with your thread is going to be how many strands you have in that particular bundle. So if I'm making a 16 strand string, I want 8 strands coming across this. If I'm making a 20 strand string, I want to have 10 coming across this. So you understand that. The reason for the rest of this zigzag is just because that's going to eat up the length of the string. This pin is going to determine how far that wraps and set the actual length of the string. It's a very simple, brilliant, powerful little system. Okay, There's, It really is pretty flawless. So with that said, I'm going to take my, my, uh, my, my B55 here and this is Dacron. I'm just going to put a little knot right in the end, a little loop, and I'm going to stick it right over that peg, and I'm going to just snug it down. Not tying it tight, not getting crazy, but I'm putting it on there like that. Then I'm going to pull this across. See how I went across that nail? I did not go down that side. I came straight across from that nail over to the other one, and then I'm going to come all the way down to this peg down here at this end and go around it, like this, and then I'm gonna come up to that adjustable peg that's in the middle where I move it both ways, bring it back down, go around that other peg, and then come up. Now when I get up to here, I am going to go one section down, one nail down from where that top is to create the next basically strand level. So now you can see I got two, one here and one here. That means that I got two strands in this now. Okay, so I'm going to then take that all the way down and come all the way around, come back up to the center, bring it back, wrap it around there, 
bring it back up again and then I'm going to the third set of nails. So now you can see I have three strands on there. Three. One, two, and three on that end. And then I'm going to bring that down around. Come around this nail down here. Back up through the middle. Wrap it around a peg that's adjustable. And I'm going to continue this all the way through and keep going down the lines till I have eight strands up there and then I'm going to show you because it is important how you finish each of these bundles here on there. So I'm going to come around, wrap it around, bring this one up, set it on there like that, back down and around, back this way. And actually it is much easier for me if I just do it while I'm holding it like this and I just run it. So, you know, I'm doing it on table for you, but for me, I just do it in my hand like that where I can hold it. It gives you a little more flexibility than trying to set it on this table. But either way that works for you, where are you at in the camera? There we go, it's gonna be fine. So I'm coming around here, coming back around here, coming back this way, over that way, keep them together. And I'm going down this one. And I think I got one more to do to make eight. And then I'll show you how we finish this off. There's that. Now when I cross this one on here, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now eight, two bundles of eight is gonna give me 16 strands. Now I'm not done here because I don't have the strand completely finished. This is telling me I'm starting from right here. I am starting thread or number eight. I don't have eight done. You're starting it here. So I have to get all the way back up through here. So I'm going to go around to create that eighth strand right here. Bring it back down here, just like we've been doing. I'm going to come around. Now what I'm going to do here with this is I'm going to take it up to where we started. This is our start point right here where I got it tied on. That is the start point. I'm going to come up to that and go around it and then straight across, so I actually have two strands on this first one, two little strands, because this is finishing it for us, brings us all the way to the end, because when we cut this, what's gonna happen is we are gonna cut it through the middle and we're gonna have that extra tag end there that's gonna meet. So in order to complete that A strand, we come all the way back up to the top like I just showed you, and then we are wrapping the opposite of your start peg one time just to hold it in place. So I have that wrapped now on there so that that's wrapped right around that one. That gives you your full eight strands. Then with that set right there like that, I'm gonna take my, uh, my uh, little razor knife and I'm gonna cut these right down the middle. Just right down the middle of the board, just like that. Pull that one away. And then this is the one that was tied on. You can see I got some other tied on ones here from doing strings earlier. Um, we'll take them off there just so it doesn't get confusing. So you can see what has happened in effect to my strands. And you can see they all cut at different lengths because they were coming across here. That's the taper effect that you're looking to get. That's what lets that bundle come together and, and, and taper into itself. So with that done, now what we have to do before we move this, we want wax. We want to wax these so that they're easy for us to work. If we don't wax them, this is too loose and will come apart a lot easier. Now what I like to do is I like to wax from about almost the length of the board. You know, pretty close to it. I want enough room to grab this by my hand, but I want to wax a good section of this thing. And the reason for that is, let me get you all in camera here, hang on. I want to wax from, you know, from the, all the way from the ends of that to about this far off. That way I have plenty of wax as I'm working this. So I'm grabbing it from here and I'm still leaving it on, that, on these nails because it kind of keeps it tight. And then I'm just taking this tube of wax in my thumb and I'm grabbing this section of strings. And as you can see, I'm just feeding it through there, waxing it. Now it's starting to stick together real good. And it's becoming that section. So once in a while that'll drop in, grab it, just put your thumb on there and burn it. You know, just push that wax into there. I like doing eight, nine, ten times. Doesn't matter what you want. Just get some good wax on it. So it's going to be good and sticky and hold together well for when you're working on it. That's all I'm doing. Put a couple good strips of wax on there. If you get a little clump that comes off like that, just put it back in there. It'll mash right into your thing real easy, right into your wax tube. But yeah, just get it good both sides, top, bottom. Just get a good coat of wax on there. Now that one is done and you can see how it's all one nice piece together now. I'm going to come over here and do the same thing. Now I'm still leaving that on that nail just because it's easy to do and it keeps everything from getting twisted up or out of whack. So I'm grabbing it like that, running the wax on there, getting a good amount of wax on it, 
flipping it over, coming in from the other side, because you'll notice it'll flatten out. You want to wax both sides of that so that it spreads really good in there. So I'm just waxing through there. And you're doing it a few times, make sure she's good and sticky. Like so. And then, then you can unravel this from here. And now what you have is you have one bundle built and ready to go. So that is one. Now we have to do the same exact thing with our other color to create the other eight strand section of that. I'm going to go ahead and turn the camera off while I hurry up and make that section and then we'll come back to this. But that way it's not uh, too long and repetitive. But we're going to do the same exact thing. I'll start it off here for you where again I'm going to that top notch on here. I'm putting that little knot in there. Putting it on there. Same exact thing. So I'm tying it on that top one right up here. Where am I? Right here. But I'm not going down like you see here. I'm coming straight across, right across there to create that first, uh, that first strand line across there. And then when I'm all done, when I come down here like this, and I wrap around this one, and let's just say again that I've done all of them. Actually, what I'm going to do is when I have them all done, I will show you that again because it is important how you finish this. So we're going to come back up, and then we're going to go to the lines or the nails that are below that one like that again. I'm going to pause it right here and when I have this all set and ready I'll bring you right back. Okay now I have that one wrapped. I have as you can see here I have my eight strands one two three four five six seven and the eighth one going around right there. Now again to finish this actually that might be in your way with that wax but there are eight strands across there but how you know you still need to finish is you can see that there's a gap right here. I'm going to grab this and I'll actually bring it over there. But the telltale that you did not finish is there you do not have the string filling this gap. So I'm going to come over here where you can see it. In here tight. Where you at on here? Uh, we're trying to find where the camera is going to pick it up. Okay. And if you look you can see that the string does not fill that gap right there. That is a telltale sign that you did not finish this. You need to bring that up to get around there. So you bring that string all the way up, wrap it around, and then just tie it off on this opposite side. But you want to fill that gap. If you have that gap there, that means that you did not complete your eighth strand around there, or your ninth, or your tenth, or whatever you're doing. So I take it all the way down from that eighth where I just crossed over, and then you do your final, your my last strand, which is eight strands. Come around, go around your main one, come back up around the end there. Now I am bringing that to close that gap. I am bringing it around that top one and then I am wrapping around once on this other side just to kind of hold it into position with one wrap on there. So it looks like this. This is very important that yours looks complete like that. And you can see here where I'm wrapped around that opposite side that one right there is where I started, right here. And then I went from there across and I did all the way around and then you finish coming all the way, let me back it off here for you, finish by coming up with that strand all the way around the top over to this one and then just wrap once around this last one right here like that so that it finishes off. Um, and so then once you have that done, which I'm gonna do right now, put that last little loop on there, there we go. So that is set, and then when you cut it, you just cut right down the middle. You can see my marks on his board where I'm just cutting right down through there. They give you, again, those perfect tapered ends that you're after. And you can see my cut line right down the center of that. That's it, sweet, simple, and easy. Now, the next step, just like we did the last one, you're going to grab that bundle here, and you're going to put the wax on this. Grab that side there, put the wax on there. So we're going to do that, and I'll be right back for you. Alright, as you can see, we have our two bundles. We have our dark brown and our cedar or light brown bundle there. We are done with this jig. We do not need this anymore except for our notes that we have written down here that I showed you that I wrote on there. So I want to just set this off to the side, but I want to be able to look over there and read those if I need to because I need to now use a tape measure. I'm going to set out this tape measure like this just on the table here and these are my two tie off pieces that I will need and uh, what I want to know is I need to know okay I need to go nine inches for my longbow I want a nine inch section and at that nine inch mark that will be the center of my loop 
the top or bottom loop, whichever one I'm making. Um, and uh, so I need to know that distance because that's my that my number. Now again, you can try that if you want to, but your number may be different. Um, I don't remember where I came up with these numbers, but I did it, like I said, 20 something years ago and they've always worked for me, so I never changed them. So, but I'm gonna look for that nine mark. Now what I wanna do is I wanna take one end of each bundle. So I have my dark brown right here, which I can put here. And then I wanna take the other end of the cedar, just throwing those over there. I want the cedar one here too, and I wanna take and make both of these bundles. So I'm gonna set them so that they're exactly the same length. You know, they start right at the same spot, which I'll show you. So I got them there, both ends are together at the same distance, which you can see on here. That's the same distance for each of them. And then I'm going to set them on here and I wanna have them right at the nine mark. So I got them right here at the nine. Now I pinch that. Okay, so now I have both of these strands right here together and I'm holding them at where that nine inches is which is my thumb right here is the center of my loop okay now that is important for a reason here I'm gonna put a quick uh, um, twist in here just because I want to show an example here but I want to mark my spot okay so I have that spot actually I'm gonna put one more in there just so it stays right there okay so now that's my spot right there that is my nine inches that I need now, if you were going to pad your loops, okay, so let's say that you were making a 12 strand string, but you wanna pad your loops. Well, why is padding the loops important? The thicker the string bulk is around the knocks of your bow, so when you have this limb tip on here, the thicker you make it around here, the stronger it's gonna be and the less chance of it hurting your bow. I don't care how fast flight compatible your bow is, all these are fast flight compatible too, but the skinnier your string is around the knocks, the better chance you have for that to cut through there. Imagine, what would you rather, what do you think will happen if you were to pick up a, uh, a 50 pound weight with a uh, with fish line and grab your hand on that fish line and lift that 50 pound weight? It's gonna cut into your hand. Now if you did it with a half inch rope, on there and you pick up that 50 pound uh, weight, it's a lot more comfortable on your hand and does less damage. Same thing happens to your limb tips on here. The thicker you have it around there, the better it is. So if you are shooting one of these skinny strings, and I'm sure people are gonna complain to me about this and tell me I'm full of crap, but it's simple physics, okay? You don't, I, I, I was an engineer, but you don't have to be an engineer to, to understand this. The thicker it is around the knocks of your bow, the safer and better for your bow and less hard and less damage it's gonna to do to your bow. I don't care how fast flight compatible it is. I'll say that again. The thicker it is around there, the better. So if you're shooting a 10, 12, or 13, or 14, or 14 strand string or something like that on these thinner materials, these fast flight strings, you're gonna to wanna to pad that loop. So your string can still be real skinny so you get the lightweight and the speed out of it if you want, but where it's gonna go around the knocks of that bow, you want that thicker, so you pat it. How you pat it is, I'm just gonna take these apart and then I'll just remeasure it, but so what you wanna do, so we know on here that this distance right here is the center of my loop on each of these. So you lay them side by side right there like that, and then you're gonna look at them and you go, okay, well that is my center right there, you will then take your material, your string materials, and you will cut off pieces that are probably about six inches long, something like that, and you will then feed them in, centering right where your center of your loop is. You're gonna start putting these extra strands into there and mixing these in to that, each of these bundles. So if I put two in this bundle, that may be a 16 strand string, but it would be padded to 18 strands around the loop. If I put in more, it would say I took and put in another one, then it would be 19 strands around the loop. Okay, or another one would be 20 strands padded around the loop. You get the concept. Now I would put it in, actually, sorry, um, it, I'm, I'm screwing my numbers up on here. If you were to put one into the tan and put one into the dark brown, to combine that would be adding two strands to pad this loop. So that would be having going from 16 to 18 strands by adding these two strands in. If you put two more strands into each one, 
that would take it to a 20 strand padded loop. Two more would be a 22 strand padded loop, which a 22 strand padded fast flight loop on an 18 strand fast flight string is what I shoot on my fast flight bows. Not on all my bows, that's what I've done for the last 15 years because I like that extra bulk around there uh, for durability and, and protection of the actual bow for dry fires, for anything like that. Like I said, you dry fire a bow with a 10 strand string on a 65 pound bow, I don't care how tough it is, you, you're, risking, you're, you're risking breaking something. I don't care what kind of limb tips you got. So padding it around the, limb t around the limbs in the loops is a good idea. Now, because I'm using Dacron, which is pretty thick, very thick actually this stuff here this is about the equivalent of a of a 20 or 22 strand fast flight string i don't need to pad these but if you were doing it like i said maybe something you want to consider and that is the method you would just take these strands and squish them right in so they center right where that center of the loop is which on mine we're talking about is 19 inches so that's how you pad a bowstring and you would do that for the top loop and the bottom loop now i'm going to go back and find my nine inches here which is going to be right there. So now I have nine inches pinned here together. Now I'm going to come over here so that this is even a little easier to see. But what we're going to do is we are going to twist. We are going to twist this together here. Where are you at? So you can see right here. All right, so I have two strands. Let me get it again where you're in focus. Right there, I'm hoping that's pretty good. Right there, let me back up a little bit. So what I want to do is I want to twist each strand away from me. I want to roll them away from me like this. Okay, I'm rolling it away, rolling this one away, and then what I want to do is I want to pull it over the other one. So I'm twisting away and then pulling over the other one this way. So I twist them both, flip that one over, okay? That's how you're doing it. Again, I'm gonna focus on you for this one. So twist away, twist away, and then spin it over. So I'm twisting it away, twisting it away, spinning it over. Okay, so that's what I'm doing here is I, I twist away, twist away, and then I'm taking it and I'm going to roll them towards me. Okay, so it makes sense hopefully here. You want, you get, that's where the opposites of this come into play. So it is a rolling of the string away from you in its own internal twist. You're rolling it away like that, but you are pulling them over each other in a direction to you. That creates that opposite twist. That's what I'm doing there. Now, once I get to a point where when I'm doing that, I have hit my one and a half inch numbers on there, that's when I'm going to lock this together. But I twist away and twist away, and then flip to me, okay? Twist away, twist away, flip to me. Twist away, twist away, flip to me. Now let's see where we are at. We are at my one and a half right there. Okay, and I'm actually gonna come back one. So that's what I need. Now my one and a half is for my longbow and it creates a very, very tight loop. And I like that because then I never worry about them popping off my lower limb like a lot of, the way a lot of people make them do, they just naturally fall off there. Well, mine doesn't because I keep it tight. Now, as you're setting this up like this and you have this basically in this kind of a position right here, Okay, my tag ends out here. You can see I have them matched up. Dark brown to dark brown, light brown to light brown. I'm going to flip them and lay this right on top of those, which creates your loop. That is my loop right there. Then I am going to continue the process, twisting away, flipping over towards me. Twist away, flip over to me with these bundles together. So I take that, right there is my loop, right here like that, and now I'm going to twist away I'm going to bring all this over here and throw it on this side. This stuff's going to twist around a little bit on you as you're doing it. But now I'm twisting away, twisting away like this, and I'm pulling over me, over to me. Twist away, twist away, go towards me like this, and then spin at me. Bringing it that way, spinning at me. So I'm twisting it in the opposite away from me for each strand and then turning them over each other as they come to me. Like I said, these will want to twist up on you on the access out there. Just kind of keep them separated like that. Twist to me. Turn it that way. Turn it this way. Do this. Now I'm going to do this for until I get five inches from the bottom of my loop. That's my number that works for me. Again, that is trial and error. Everything about this stuff is kind of a trial and error. There is no exact science and it's all based on how tight you make your twists and what you do. It is all personal preference. 
and uh, and it's experience, you know, experimenting. Again, that's that's the the way it works because everybody does it. You know, everybody twists a little different, a little tighter, a little less, whatever it is. Um, but it will not take you long. Like I said, one or two test strings, and you'll have this down. Twisting like that, keep it away. Twist to me. Twisting away, twist away, flip them at me. Twist away, twist away, flip at me like that. That one's going over that one. <coughs> and this is the process that you keep doing. And then you check it and see, all right, right now I'm about four inches. So I keep going. Twist away. Spin at me like that. Like that. Spread those out because you can see down here they start getting tangled up. So I'm going to just kind of separate them with my hand so they stay apart from each other down there. Keep twisting. Anytime you stop and do something, just pinch and hold that where you're at so it's easy. That way you got your other hand free to do whatever you need to, but just keep her right on going. Twist away. And you'll start to see it get ta it tapers out thinner because you had those tapers in the end of your string when you cut them. Well, now they're starting to fade into there. So you can see that it's starting to get in there. I'll show you when we get there. we got a little bit further to go here I want. Like this. Probably three more twists and I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. All right. And now I'm going to use that clip that I showed you, that little piece of paper clip here, that little spring clip. And I'm going to use that to hold this just so it doesn't untwist on me. Now I can bring this over and show you what we have. And get it unhooked here. So what we are left with here is, I'm going to get in front of it. On, so you can see, but there is our string. There is my loop right there. That's the loop. There's my twist. You can see these tapers coming out of here. All these little filaments. Those are where we cut that at the end of that board at different lengths. Those are all those tapers. You can even see more tapers here at the end, right in here like this. And then this is our string that has no tapers in it. That's past there. We used almost every bit of that to create this loop on here, um, right up there at the top. So that's basically how you're making a loop. Now we're going to do the same thing on the other side, the same exact way. And if you were padding it, you would also pad this other end. But before we do that, we want to basically separate these strings out. So I'm going to set that. There is my loop end I just created. So we're going to set that there. We want to separate these out. So they are separate. Take your strands here. Separate them out so you have them at the end. And you bring these in this way. Now, what you can do if you want to, there's this thing called back twisting. So when you look at this up here and you see which way you were twisting it as, you can put back twist into this and reverse twist these strands individually, this section and this section, so that they lay better and tighter when you actually get ready to do your other side. So we take this whole strand and you would spin it the opposite of the way you were twisting it before and it will create that. I personally just don't care anymore. I mean, they, they, they lay pretty flat anyway, but some people like to do that so that it ends up real rock solid and tight. I'm not concerned with it, so I don't mess with it too much. But you can put back twists in it so that it seats nice and tight. Um, it's going to be tight either way you cut it and it's going to work. It's just a, a cosmetic thing if you want it. But if you're going to do that, what you would do is stretch these out here so you have them like this hang on i know because i got that camera pretty tight so i have them now equaled out all the way around you could take these strands and back twist both of them about 10 or 12 twists opposite direction of how you twist it away to you um, if you want to do that so now i have these set what i like to do is i take the peg from my board and i stick it in that loop and then I'm going to step down on that on the ground and pull up on these. And that's going to let me make sure I have them nice and tight. So I step on it. I got the peg down here on the ground. And I step on it. And then when I pull up on these, it's going to let me make sure that they are completely even. So when I grab this spot, I know that there is no, one is not shorter than the other inside that strand. They are completely tight all the way through there. So that's the reason that I stood down here on that peg piece right there just to make sure that that was good and tight. So now that I got that done, I can take this section. If you were padding your loops, now is when you would also be padding these ones. You would look and go nine inches right there. And then you would take your pieces, which I think I knocked mine on the ground, and you would start inserting 
your extra film or your other strands into there for where your padding is and getting those locked down. Now I have this spot here locked together there just so it's a clamp. Now with these string pieces right here where I have this clamp on here where that clamp is holding that I can take this one put it on where I have that clamp at and then just tie this on with just one little tie on here like this. Now I don't need to leave that clamp on if I don't want to. I can always just pull this and it'll come right off, but now I don't have to leave that clamp on. It leaves that tied together. That's what I use these extra little spare pieces for. It just kind of makes that so that it's not coming apart on me. But I have my full five inches on there that I need. Now I have to find my nine inches for here, right there. So there I have that, I got this, I'm gonna twist them away. Again, I'm twisting away, pulling two. Twist away, pull two. And you're creating that other loop. Upper loop, lower loop, whichever one you're working on. Twist away, pull two. Twist away, flip it to you. Twist away, flip it to you. And you just keep doing this. Now I'm going for the same thing. I'm going for about a one and a quarter, one and a half inch uh, loop on here, because I'm longbow, I make them both the same. The upper one will stretch enough that it'll it'll slide down where I need it to. So all right, let's look and see here. Let me split these two here and bring them in there to where I started. And see what we got. That's actually too far. So we're going to unwind that one. There we go. So that's good right there. And then I'm going to flip this right on top of itself. Just like we did. Right there, set that on there. And then we're going to do the same thing again. Twisting away, twist away, and flip to me. Twist away, flip to me. Just rolling it just like that. We're going to just keep right on going. Twisting away, flipping over. Now this, well here, you can see it starts to twist up on here like this and come together. Again, you're just going to kind of unravel it enough where you got some room to work with by just separating and pulling the strands apart. Same thing, twisting away, flipping to me. Away, over. You're going to do this until you get to that five inches, or for me, five inches, on there and just keep working it go right on down to gain that five. And I'm going to come over here a little closer just so you guys can see it in more detail here. You can see I'm actually separating those strands out. And then here they are up close, right where is the camera at? Right here, so I know where to do this. So I'm twisting away. Rolling to me. Twisting away, rolling to me. Like that. I'm just gonna keep right on going until I hit that five inches. You can hear the peg bouncing down there on the ground because I left it in that loop. Like this. And I know when I'm getting close to the five inches because I start running out of the tapers. So that's kind of my go-to tells me about when I'm getting pretty close to there. But that's it. And see how it's tangling up right here? I'm just going to split those apart with my hand so I got some room to work here. Twisting away, rolling over. All right, let's see where we're at on the measuring stick. And I am actually just a little over, so we're going to leave it right in there like that. Now at this spot, I'm going to tie this with this other piece, or I could clamp it with that clamp if I wanted to. I'm just going to tie this off, lock it down, right there like that, make sure it's snugged up. There we go. Now we have an actual bowstring here, just like this, okay? You have two loops, loop at this end, you have the loop at that end. So I have two loops. Now when I pull on this here like this, I'm going to need to start twisting this string up. Now you want to twist it the same exact way everything else is twisted. So if you look at the end of it, I can see that I'm twisting it this way. So I'm just going to continue twisting. I like to kind of go to about here and twist them up pretty good for a minute. I like them twisted pretty good at the end. And then give that a good snug like that and kind of let it sit there. And I'm going to come to this side and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to twist this one up right into here like this and get it twisted up in there pretty good and tight right in here where you're at just like that so it lines up in there pretty good a couple good twists I'm gonna snug that up like that then we're gonna finish twisting the rest of it by going opposites here 
like this, and you can see that string twisting up in the middle. I'm twisting this hand this way towards the camera. This end is twisting towards me this way, which is creating the twist all along this string that you are seeing in here like that. Now, a telltale sign, if you did it right, is going to be where you're going to look at this and you are going to have consistent loops from top to bottom. What I mean by that, if I come over here and I hold this here, you can see, see how the, the twists all the way down are going the correct way, where's the camera here, are going the correct way on there. If you did this wrong, somewhere in here closer to one of the ends, they won't line up right and it'll, you'll see it'll kick over itself and it will go the, uh, the other direction on there. But this one here, as you can see, is done right. Now we have that completed string and it is made right there. And I, I know about how many twists I wanna have in here because of making it before. Um, so that's set now. What I gotta do is I wanna put this string on the bow. So to keep it from spinning, I lost my stick down there because I heard it fall. I'm just going to stick this in there. Just stick something in there just to hold these together. That'll keep that from coming apart on you. You see it wants to kind of twist up a little bit on itself. That's normal. Now what we want to do is we want to actually put it on the actual bow. So you're going to take and set it up with whichever loop. Now I look at these loops. And I'm like, okay, that one is bigger, that one is smaller, I'm going to make that one, that's a little tighter. I'm going to make either one you want, but I'm going to make that my bottom loop. So knowing that, I'm going to take my bow, and I'm going to stick one end of that string over the top of my bow, slide it past the knock, like that, to give me some room. I'm going to stretch that string out, and I'm coming down here to the bottom of the bow. I need a little more slack for the top. And I'm going to come down here and I'm going to fit this one over the bottom limb like there. And like I said, you can see I like it pretty tight where it fits on there pretty good. Now I'm going to string my bow. Let me do that real quick here. So we're going to use a stringer for this here. I'm going to put my stringer on there. Got it set. Put that stringer on that end. And then once you string it, you want to be cautious as you do it to make sure, you know, make sure nothing's getting away from you or that nothing's not done right. So to kind of take your time as you do it. So I have that string now, as you can see, from front to back, that string is set on my bow and made here, just like that. And it lets you remove these. So you can see it. Now we're only halfway done, so we still got to serve it and set it up. But you can see that that is even all the way down, all the way through. You can see my ties that are dangling right here like that, that we're going to just basically grab and pull. And that comes off. We'll use that for the next string we make. We have one on this end. Those we're just holding our loop ends together. We're going to grab and pull that off too. So now we have a string right there. Now if I did it right, I should be coming in for me right just under 7 inches of brace height. And I am at uh, 7 and a 16th of brace height on there right now. Which is perfect because now what we're going to do is stretch this string. To do that, I like to take the bowl. And I know it's kind of hard to see in the camera here. But I'm just leaning it against my legs. And I am rocking it back and forth on that string, bouncing it and wiggling it like this, just resting it right on my leg and doing this. And what that's doing is that's stretching that string. I just wiggling it back and forth, giving it a little pop like that, just kind of helping stretch that out. Now, if I look at it, I'll bet it probably did go down about a 16th and it actually went down about a 16th. I'm right at seven, right on the money, even now on my thing. Now, it's going to stretch a little more when I shoot it a couple times being Dacron. Um, and I will have to adjust it, but that's what I'm looking for. So I actually nailed that one pretty spot on and perfect. Now there are a couple things we have to do to this now too. Now you can let these little loose ends that you see here that are coming off somewhere here where they, like this. Okay, these little tail ends right here. Uh, you could leave those. They aren't going to hurt anything if you want, if you want to leave them. Or you can take and you could actually snip them off carefully without cutting anything. And you can cut them off if you don't want them on there like that or shorten them up if you want to. They don't hurt anything. Uh, and you do the other side as well too. If you got any little stragglers, like look at this one here. See how long that is coming out of there? If I don't want that there, I just take my knife and cut that right off. They're kind of tricky to hold because they're waxed and your fingers have got wax all over them from making it. But yeah, you can trim them right up if you want to 
Or like I said, they'll just fuzz up on you anyway and not be a big deal. It doesn't matter. Probably adds a little silencing aspect to it too, really, if you think about it. Because uh, they're going to kind of take a little deadening out of that string. But like I said, if you want to get rid of them, you can cut them. You can do whatever you want to on any of those leftover strands. Now, <clears throat> what we're going to do is I'm going to zoom you out a little bit. So we're going to talk about how to set this up for what we got to do before we unstring this. There are some things we got to go through. So I'll be right back. Okay, got you framed a little more for some of this part. Now, here's that string. We just got done making it. There's some wax on there, but uh, which is good. We'll show you that. Now, if you're using Dacron like I am with the Dacron material, we just made this one out of B55. You can also use scissors if you want to trim up any of these ends, which you're going to see here. I'm going to bring them in and into focus here so you can see. But any of these loose ends right here that you want to trim, you can use scissors and come right in on those two and trim those right off like this. Now, if you're using fast flight material, the scissors are a little kind of, you got to, you know, work them and work them and kind of chew through them. It's a little tougher material, uh, but you can do it. But like I said, a razor knife works better if you're using fast flight material. But with Dacron, scissors work fine. Just don't cut your string, obviously, your main string. These are just those tapered ends that are popping through. So you could go ahead and go through and do that to uh, uh, both ends. If you got any, just kind of run your hand backwards against the string and they'll pop up if you have any. Um, if I wanted to take that one down a little lower, I could. Um, like I said, just don't cut your string, but you can cut those little, if you care about them. If you don't, if they don't, they're not going to hurt anything. All they're going to do is just kind of fray a little bit. So it doesn't matter, but that's one thing you can do. Now, what we want to do here, did I leave any on there that I don't want? No, I'm all right with all that. That's fine. Um, but again, you could get real technical if you really wanted to narrow them down and get those right in there with those scissors. You can come in close. And pop them right off if you want as long as you're not cutting that string you're not hurting nothing um now what you want to do is you want to definitely wax the string so i'm going to take this wax and i'm just going to kind of coat or push it in a little bit in there but i want to just coat this whole string like this and get a good coat of wax on here let it kind of beat up let it kind of be clunky and white on there it's not going to hurt nothing go down the whole string both sides top bottom just really get it waxed like that, get a good coat of wax on it. Now some strings like Fast Flight, some of like the Brown Owls Fast Flight stuff, they definitely came a little more waxed uh, than the BYC or BCY stuff does. Um, so with the Brown Owls, I didn't usually have to do this too much. Uh, with the BYC, I definitely do, but it's no big deal. It's just wax either way. Now, once I got that good coat of wax on there, you can use a piece of leather if you want. You can use whatever you want. I just use my fingers and I just burn it in all along this thing like this you'll feel the heat in your fingers because you're rubbing tight on there and it's good enough to burn it in there good let your fingers get nice and warm burn that into the um into the actual string so you kind of melt that wax and get it inside of there so it feeds itself right through the string again you can use like a piece of leather um if you want to a lot of people do and they'll rub it with leather whatever works for you just melt that wax into that string for me like i said lazy i just use my fingers and get it all over inside of there so that it coats right in there good and, and well and you soak that string with wax. Now once that's done, next thing we want to do is we need to mark where we are going to put, um, I want to do a couple things. I want to mark where my serving is going to go um, and then while I'm at it, just for the heck of it, I'm also going to mark where I want my string silencers just so it's one less step I got to do later. So with my serving, what I got to do first is find the center of this. And you want to make sure you had your brace height about set already, which I told you we were at seven. I am straight at seven right now, which is about good. So I want to be just under when I'm all said and done. To find the center, you put your bow square on here, slide it right down so it rests right on your arrow shelf, just like this, right there. And then make sure that that's on your center go right like that. And then that is going to give you your center point. I'm going to take my marker and I'm going to put a mark on here that just says that is center. Okay, then we can take the square off of there, set that there. I see my center point right here. I take my tape measure, open it up a little bit. I want to have, I'll turn this around for you. I, I like about a, a seven inch, six and a half or seven inch serving myself personally. So I'm gonna go do that. I'm gonna, so I have that set. So seven is right here where my finger is. I'm gonna look at this and I'm gonna go, okay, here's my center mark. I want to go about three inches above that and let the rest of it be down below. So I'm going to mark this right here at about three inches. I'm going to put a mark here. Then I'm going down to where seven is and I'm putting a mark right here. 
that becomes my serving zone is right here. The reason I have it offset is there's the center, and then what's going to happen is I have the center of it here, and then I'm going to be a little bit above that to where my arrow is going to sit when it's all said and done. I want room for my finger to fit on there too. So I kind of do that about a, a two and a half to three inch above centers where I usually go for my serving. The rest is down here to protect my string from wearing against an arm guard or anything like that. So that's what I do. If you want to go longer, you know, go eight inches, go eight inches. You want to, you do whatever you want to. I go to center. And then I work with a seven inch serving and I offset it about two and a half inches from center up to the top. So I don't care where my center is anymore, but I definitely want to make sure that I can see where this top one is. So I mark it really good so that it's on there. So if I'm, you know, it's not going to wear off and I can see where it is. So I come down here and I mark my bottom one really good, which is also the reason I use a red marker because I'm usually using a, you know, a dark colored, uh, I don't usually serve with red. So, or, uh, make a string with red too often so the red stands out on here. But that is my serving zone. Now for my silencers, I run them 13 inches from the where the where the splice of the loop comes together. So on here, I'm going to look at this and I'm going to go from here 13 inches, which is right here. So I know right here is where I'm going to put one of my silencers. And I do the same thing on this other end down here. Where are we at here for you? Right here. Hang on. Where you can see this so i'm going to go from here right there and there's no rocket science i'm not being super precise but uh, i'm right there 13 inches is going to be right here and so now i know that's where my other string silencer is going to go that lets me have those and i'm going to mark that real good so i can see when i stick them in there coming back over to this end over here find that mark there it is right there so now my job here is pretty much set. i have that marked I have that silencer, so both my silencers locations are marked. My serving section is marked. Now we're going to go ahead and we are going to use the serving tool and we are going to actually serve that string in. And I'll be right back in one second to show you how to do that. Okay, now to serve this, we need a serving tool. That's what this is right here. You can see the advantage to this when I bring it over here to you. But what a serving tool does here is it is going to, you can see this thread goes through and it goes around a bar, around another bar through here and that creates a tension on there and keeps that nice and tight. And then it is adjustable tension here by this knob. I like mine set, so I mean even here with just that little bit left, I can't pull that out because I can't bend it. I need to get a little slack on there so I can get around my finger or something on there where I can pull, I still can't pull it. So I get it, I mean I want mine, I like mine pretty tight. There it is like this. I gotta put a finger on there and then even like I said with the wax on my fingers I'm still not able to there we go I can see I can barely so I like my serving a little tight um, the thickness of the serving that you use on here is going to determine how tight that serve is um, so you get it in different diameters this is 0.21 serving uh, diameter that I'm using here you can get it in point or 0.021 yeah point whatever it is 0.021 you can get it in 0.18, you can get it in 0 0.25, 0 0.26. There's all different uh, thicknesses of servings. And you're going to, you know, again, it's a trial and error. Uh, if I were to tell you that I was using 0 0.021 on a 16-strand Dacron string, a lot of people would say, you bumped your head. You can't, that's way too thick. You can never do it. I like my serving tight. I, this is the way I do it. You do whatever you want to. I've been making strings for 25 years. I, I know what works for me. So it is a trial and error thing. So when you're buying your string material, you can check some forums and ask around a little bit or call up a couple string makers. Uh, Steve Angel, simple tradition or simply traditional he built some amazing strings um, and you might want to talk to him about what maybe he uses for what diameter serving um, he'll use on how many strands of string for whatever material you're using there's way too many to cover for this stuff but uh, if you're going with a Dacron like I am I would say probably a 0.018 or a 0.21 like this I would probably say a 0.0 or point Oh, uh, one eight um, is probably going to be better for most people. But again, I, I serve mine pretty tight. Um, so this is what I like using. But now how this works. Here's the top of it. Here's the bottom. Okay. Here's my shelf of my bow. The key thing to remember is you always serve into the, into the string. What I mean by that, when you draw your bow and you put your fingers on, when you release, you when you grab that string, you are going to pull it to you like this as you tighten up that draw for me this handy okay right hand it'll be the opposite but you always want to serve from the string 
towards the shelf of the bow and then around, okay? Goes from here into the shelf side and then comes around. That way when you straw, you're tightening it. So from on the outside, it is going to swing from here into the shelf side of the bow first and then come around. That way you're always pulling it in the right direction. Now, you are going. what we're going to do is we are going to basically have this this serving lay on here like that, right across there, okay? I'm gonna bring this in a little tighter to show you once I get it set. But once you kind of lay that on there with enough slack here, you want to then serve over top of it, wrapping around to my shelf side like that, but I wanna go around it where I'm gonna serve over top of this, this piece is going to lay on my string and I'm going to wrap over it about six, eight times uh, is what the plan is. And that's gonna hide that and tie that knot and create it. So I'm gonna set it on here about right where my red mark is. And then I'm going to by hand just wrap and I wanna make sure you get on this side, this side, okay, cause we're serving that way. I wanna get on that side of the string. So the first loop's probably gonna have to cross over it. Okay, and then here's that tag end. You can see I'm still holding, I just lost it, but um, it's kind of tricky to do for camera where you can see it, but I'm gonna come on here like this. I'm gonna go over, and I wanna get over top of that, keeping it kind of tight here to start with. Again, it's there you go like that. And then I'm still holding on to this tag end so it doesn't spin with it. And I'm getting over it, there we go. And then I'm still holding that so it stays, and I wanna keep spinning that a time or two around there. Trying to get that to bite into there for a couple twists here. And again, it's tough because I serve so tight. Now what we have, I'm going to bring it in here and show you. We have here, right here where you are, we're going to get it where you can see it. Okay, but we have that string end right here, which started up there at the top and I have served around the string and around that tag end. And I've went around there about four or five times already. And then before I finish going over it, I'm gonna take and I'm gonna cut that off with my knife. Right here, I use scissors, I can use whatever I want. But I'm going to cut this so that when I continue serving it, it's just gonna be buried under there. So I'm cutting it about right there, like that. Okay, but you wanted it long enough in the beginning so you could actually hold that still and keep it from twisting. But now you can see I got it cut off right there. I'm going to just keep serving and letting that bury underneath that string just like that. So it's going to hide and be tucked right under there and that creates that upper knot on there. So as I'm spinning that around and notice again I'm going from the top of the string to the shelf side of the bow. I'm not going around the back side, I'm going to this. That way when I put my fingers on there and I draw, to tighten up that draw, I am pulling the serving tighter, not looser. Okay, but now I'm just gonna keep wrapping this right around here. I'll do it for a minute so you can see what's happening. And then this is also nice, now when you first start doing these, and you have these different thicknesses of serving material and you're trying to figure out what's gonna work or how tight or how loose you want it to be, all it has to do is be tight enough to not loosen up, okay? Not separate or loosen up. That's really all you need. Um, I like it nice and tight just because it's, like I said, a personal preference, so I tighten mine on there. But now what you could do is once you get it to a point where you're past, you can see that knot is right here where you add on the camera, you can see that that knot is right there at that thick spot, and then it's starting to taper down where I'm past that knot, past that under layer that we had in there. Once you get this down far enough to where you're past there, you could actually take and uh, pull out, let me get a little further so it's past there and so I got a little room, but without having to serve the entire bowstring, which we're going all the way down to wherever my mark is, right down to here, we're going that far down on this thing. But once you get it down far enough like this, you could grab an arrow and stick an arrow on there and knock and click and click and see how tight it is. If it's too tight, you could uh, tighten this up and make it tighter. If it's too loose, you can uh, loosen this up and make it so it's not quite as tight as serving on here. Or you could just abandon this roll and change to a different thicker or thinner serving if you need to. But there's no reason to serve the whole thing. You can test it right there right at that spot, right off the bat, knowing if you screwed up, you only gotta take the serving off for that you know, inch and a half that you put on there. So, as we have that sitting on there now, like I said, it's just a matter of spinning this 
and going all the way to that mark. Just rolling it around, rolling it around. And I'm going to continue this and then I'm going to show you how we tie this off at the end because that part is pretty critical. So I'm going to leave this right here, stop the camera, and when we get to the end, I will then bring you back into this. Okay, now I got you zoomed in here pretty good. Now that is my mark right there. We've been going around this thing and we have it there. Now to finish this, this is kind of a complicated thing. So I got you zoomed in pretty close so that you can pay attention to it. But we're going to do the same thing we did here, but it's a little more complex than that. So I want to make sure that I have, we'll just use scissors, have them handy here. Uh, actually, I lied. I don't think I want to use scissors. I want my knife here. So we're going to open that knife up and have it sitting right here handy. What I'm going to do is I'm going to stretch this out. I want to hold that so it's not coming unwrapped again. I got my fingers pinching right there where that red mark is and right where that is. I want to bring this out and I want some slack. Don't be afraid to give yourself, you know, give yourself a foot or so of slack on there. And then I want to cut that. So I'm going to take my knife. I'm going to kind of just stick this right between my legs to hold that, uh, that jig. And I'm going to cut that right here. And you can see I just kind of cut that right off. Now I'm still holding this right here so it doesn't get loose, but I have all this slack here. Now, since I know I'm going to serve this around going this way, I need to create some back loops this way over here with the other end. So I'm going to take my finger here and just wrap it around here so that that stays tight right there. So now I can still hold that. Just putting the loop around my finger makes it easier to hold that tight. Now I'm going to take this, since I'm going to go around this way, when I wrap that way, I want it to unravel from this side. So in order to do that, I want to be able to go so that when I wrap around, it is going to unwrap, right? Let me see here, because it takes a second to remember. No, that's going to twist it on, so I want to go the other way. So I want to, because you're going to wrap them to the inside, you're going to wrap through the middle of this. I have this strand, and I have this strand. I want to wrap in the middle so that as I wrap this, it unwraps from this side. So then what I'm going to do, well, I have that sitting right here. So I'm going to take this piece, and now I'm wrapping it. You can see it here. That's one loop around. Okay. Then I'm going to go for two loops, again, on the inside. I'm moving towards my, my main serving. That's two loops. Dropping it down. Grabbing it. Doesn't matter how far these are spaced or what, because you're going to unravel them. That's three. Four. Five. Six. Whatever you want, five, six, seven, eight, doesn't matter. Let's go eight or whatever I'm doing here just for the heck of it. Doesn't matter, just locking it down. So then when I have that wrapped, I'm going to lay that over here. Okay, I want that on this side now so that when I serve this around, it is going to wrap over top of this tag end that is here and it is going to unwrap this stuff as it goes. So now I'm going to get my finger out of there. Okay, I have that set here and pulled across this like this. And now I'm going to, by hand, pulling tight, continue wrapping this just like I was. And as I'm wrapping this side, this end over here is unwrapping. I'm tightening this one. This one is coming undone. And in the middle of all that is this end. We are covering this piece up. So I'm going down, grabbing it. And as I'm pull, wrapping wraps on here, they're coming off of this side. Putting a wrap on there and it's coming off the other side. Like this. And you can see, as I'm building up here, I'm down to only three in between here now. Keep wrapping. Keep going. Keep going until it's just a loop around your string and there's nothing left like that. Now it's just a loop wrapped around there. Now I'm going to grab this piece, wrap it around my fingers, and I'm going to pull it. As I'm pulling it, you see this tighten this loop up inside of here. Let me get you where you can see. But this loop here... That has no more wraps in the middle of it as I'm pulling this it's tightening that up on there so I'm just going to keep going and pull it right through there now I'll bring it in close for you to see closer I, I don't know if it'll even be too close let me see where is that at on me and right here you can see that knot come right through that because we double overlaid it and pulled it through now I'm just going to cut that with a razor knife right there and then burn it with a lighter and that's going to seal that right in and make it perfect so we have that set there. We're right here, working with it right here. I'm gonna take that knife or scissors, whatever you want. Again, try to not cut the string. You know, you take and lay the blade against the string, but with the edge pointing away from it. You want the back of this closer to that. So there's no chance of cutting it. I'm gonna cut it. It's all right, even if you leave a little, 
extra little tab sticking up like you see right on there. That there is not going to hurt anything either because we're going to hit it with a lighter. And when we do, it's going to sizzle right up and I'm going to smash it right on there nice and tight. Check the front one if any of it was sticking out. Just sizzle it up. Just like that, you know, you're good. If you had any frays, you can run it right down. You aren't going to hurt nothing. Don't be afraid of it. Um, and then that does that. So now we are served. We are set. Now when we're ready to set this string up, we can use our knock square and put it on this serving. After we check and make sure that the distance, the brace height is correct when you put that string on, and then you can put your knock, you see I have a mark right there, I can clamp that knock on and squish it down with my pliers and be all set. I'm not knocking this string yet. I may, actually we will when we're done, but now for the silencers here, I'm gonna back these back out so I show you how we do the silencers. Okay, now for the silencers, we're just using yarn. I'm um, sorry about the mess on mine, but apparently I just found out when I went out and got this stuff and was making it, there was a uh, mouse that was trying to make a nest in my yarn drawer in my garage where I keep this stuff. So I had got a couple pieces that are chewed up on the end. You can see he got into some of my feathers, kind of a nightmare. I'm gonna catch him and his whole family and they're going down, I promise you. But uh, with the yarn, I already went ahead and cut some off. Now how I pick my yarn based on what I wanna do, my very scientific system for this is I basically go about my wingspan and then about another probably foot. So if I stretch this out from arm to arm like this and I go all the way across, as you can see on that end, I want about a foot left hanging over out on that end. That's basically my very scientific method of measuring this. Okay, just what's always worked for me. So that's what I do. I don't even know what that measurement is. That's just how I figure it. You put the two ends of it together, okay? Bring it down and you come right down here with your razor knife and you cut it. Okay, then you take these two ends and you bring them up and you make sure that all of them are aligned perfectly right here together. So now you got four ends aligned in there perfectly together and you got four strands and I cut it. Then I come here and I line those up again making sure that each one of them individually are evenly lined up. I don't want to get too carried away or have them all spread out. I like them pretty even. So I keep them there. You see now you got like whatever four here and then you're gonna cut it again. Now you have eight total strands and you just keep going until it gets down to be where you gotta make your very final cut like that. Now, if you notice some, I did this on purpose, some of them are kind of a little taller than the other ones. If they are, don't be afraid to take your scissors or whatever you want and kind of even that out right across the top. Works just fine, okay? So now I have those set perfect. I'm gonna stick my knife back in there and I'm gonna cut it again like that. Now this next one will be the final one. You can see they're about uh, width of my hand kind of thing. Well one more is about all I can get and keep a finger in there to keep them separated. Okay so now I'm looking at this and I want them like that because I want to be able to keep that finger in there so that they're separate so I have even strand counts in both ones. So as I do that that's about the max I can get and I'm going to carefully put that in there or you could use scissors and I'm going to cut that all the way across each of those strands. I'm going slow because I don't have a lot of grip on this. There we go. And then each of those strands as I separate them right where my finger is, one bundle and the other bundle. Now, double check them. Make sure that end is pretty close together and pretty good. If you want to, like I said, if you want to be real picky, you could even them out a touch like that. Just make sure they're evened out. This doesn't really even matter. I'm just really, really anal. And then I do the same thing on this side. Making sure they're evened out. That gives me one bundle right there. And then do the same thing with this bundle here. Make sure it's just evened out. If you want to, like I said, you can trim a smidge if you need to. Just to make sure they're evened out. I just, like I said, not mandatory. Just me being picky. Just that one right there and that one. Like that. Just makes a nice round even ball if you do, if they're evened out. Now, we already marked our string. So we got two bundles sitting here. And we already marked our bowstring earlier. We put those marks in here. I got one mark right here and one at that end. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this right here, give myself a little slack in the string. I'm gonna split the strands right here where these are. Now you can put them on with zip ties or tie them on or whatever, but I always thought they made more silencing capabilities if they were integral into the string. So I put them between my strands, even them out like so, and that there, is what I call a silencer installed. Okay, that's it. Just sweet, simple. Even it out on here like that on that end. Then I'm going to go do the same thing down on this end. 
wherever that mark is right here. Can you guys see that in there? Uh, yeah, you can. So I'm going to split that open. And I'm going, oh, where's my seven? Should go right there. Get that out of the way because it makes me nervous around here. There we go. And I'm going to stick this into the strand. Make sure all the strands are in. Make sure it's even right between the strands of the strings. <coughs> and that gives me that set up. What is that one there that is sticking out real far? Where did he come from and go? We're going to put him back in there the right way. He kind of got away from us. So I could stick him back in there. Come on, dude. There you go. That's in there now. That's set. And then there it's like that. Now what we're going to do is we are going to string this and then give it a couple little twangs and that is going to seat that and make that come in together perfect and make those silences come to life. So then you can mix them with cattails, which I do too on mine. Uh, normally when I, now with this, with the Dacron being so quiet, I'm not sure I'm putting the cattails in there for the extra weight, but on my fast flight strings, I would always, I did a video on how I make my string silencers a little while ago and I showed you how I also incorporate cattail into there. Fast flight string is noisier than Dacron, so I had to do that, and I like the advantages of it, but this Dacron is so quiet that I'm, I'm not running the cattails in there. I don't think I need it, and uh, it's just so quiet I'm not worried about it on any kind of level. So now that we have that in there, and I have that bow strung, you can see right here, there's that silencers, your front one, rear one. Now when I take this string and I start twinking it, just a little pluck like that, a few plucks, even now, listen how quiet that is, this Dacron, between the bing, bing of Fast Flight. You know, so nice and quiet. So I bounce that a little bit, a couple of them, 10 bounces. It'll do more as you're shooting it. But now, what we have there are two perfect, as you can see, silencer balls. Right there like that. Sweet, simple, and easy. And that right there is how you make a bowstring. Like I said, you could put a knock on this too. Before I put my knock on, I will take it out in the garage or outside at my target and just eyeball where I want to stick it. And I'm going to shoot this string three, four times close to the target with the target five feet in front of me. I'm not trying to hit anything accurate wise, but I want to shoot this bow uh, or this string four, five, six times uh, to let it set in. Because especially with Dacron, it will get a little, the brace heist will shrink on this and it's going to stretch a little with those first few shots. So I shoot it five, eight, ten times real fast. Then I re-twist, because if it's too short, you gotta add twists to it. Okay, if it's too long, then you gotta take twists out of it to get it to the right length you need for the string. So I'm gonna shoot it a few times, get that to wear in, uh, or to level out where it's gonna be and be stretched where it's gonna be. Then I'm gonna put my knock point on there and then the string is ready to go. So that shows you every aspect of making a bow string exactly how I do it. Hopefully this video helps you out. If I think there's any links to anything in here that can help you, I'm gonna put it down below for you. Most likely those links will be Amazon because Amazon has free shipping. Okay, that's a beautiful thing. Nothing wrong with a lot of the traditional archery stores out there. I absolutely love them, but they're, they charge you shipping, and shipping sucks to deal with it, and they don't give you a way out of it. Amazon, Amazon is free shipping, so um, I will put some links down below for you. Amazon, if I can do it, if it's something that's like this board, if this is on Amazon, I'm going to put it on Amazon for you because it is a better deal with the free shipping, um, and probably the same exact price, if not better. Some of this stuff, you'd be amazed. This stuff is a lot cheaper um, in certain places than in is other this stuff matters but i will put some links down below for you and uh like i said if i find it on amazon and it's a better deal for you i'll put an amazon link if i don't find it on amazon or it's not a better deal i will put the link uh to uh you know somewhere like three rivers which sells awesome stuff they have everything here um and you know i'll have that a link to that on there for you too or wherever but i will hook you up with links down below for this stuff Thanks for watching. Uh, I'll also have some videos probably rolling in right now over top of me that show you some other things with this. Maybe my original string video. But any questions you have, leave them in the comments below. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And uh, watch for more videos coming to me. Also, don't forget I have two courses out there. 
the bow hunting whitetails online video course it's 16 hours of pure video stuff and it's going to teach you everything there is to know that is also in the description down there and so is my save thousands course so if you are trying to buy a new car new rv new camper new anything like that that video or that course will teach you how to get it for the absolute best price. It'll save you thousands and thousands of dollars. That information is also in the description below at the Save Thousands course. So thanks for watching. We'll talk to you later. Bye.